Hey everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I have recently been receiving a ton of new stuff from Beta FPV. They have been crazy busy cranking out new drones and new components. It seems like every week there's something new. Uh, it's hard for me to even keep up and they send most of this stuff to me. Uh, that's super cool because I like to try new things and I like to use the components to make my own builds and find what I actually like the best. And you've seen some of those builds on this channel. Uh, so that's really cool. But the reason I'm making this video is because my time is limited and it's gonna take me time to build these builds and fly them, much less make videos about them. And I probably won't make videos about everything anyway, uh, because I just don't have the time. This is something that I do for fun. This is my hobby. I do it because I love FPV and I enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys. And I know it's been helpful to a bunch of people, so I'm happy to do that. Uh, but there's only so much I can do. So I'll probably just end up picking and choosing the things that I think are most interesting um, and focus on those. And I'll bring you some videos in the future. But right now, I've got all this stuff and some of it's actually pretty interesting. And there's some that's not here um, that I'll be able to show you very soon. This may answer some questions that you have right off the bat. It might also raise new questions and that's cool too. Let's talk about it down in the comment section below. If I can't answer it right now, uh, then maybe I can include that information in a future video. So there's the Meteor 75. There's a bind and fly version of the Twig XL. Um, I don't have the bind and fly, but I have a lot of the same parts, so I can tell you about that. Um, and similarly, there is a four inch drone called the X Knight. It's a four inch toothpick and it uses these uh, HQ props. Uh, that's pretty interesting. And then we've got some flight controllers and a new camera. First up, we've got the Meteor 75. It's a 75 millimeter 1S whoop with the BT 2.0 connector. Comes with these white three blade props, which makes it look a lot like the Meteor 65. You can see the size comparison there. I switched out the props as you can see. I'll explain more about that when I make a video. But for now, the thing that's unique about this build are the 1102 18,000 kV motors. It's faster and more powerful than most people think of when they think of a 1S whoop, but not quite as powerful as a 2S whoop, uh, but you get the convenience of 1S and the batteries go in like this. Mine is about 30.5 grams. But again, I changed the props with the stock props. It's around 29 and a half grams. That puts it in the same weight category as the uh, Beta 75 Pro 2, the Mobula 7, uh, the Tiny Hawk 2. Those are all 2S drones. This one's 1S, but it's about the same weight. So it's in good company there, but it could be lighter. I like to make 75 millimeter builds with 802 motors. When you get these down to the 20 to 22 gram range, uh, they're pretty awesome. And so hopefully I'll be able to show you more of this in the future. Next, there's the Twig XL Bind and Fly. Now, the Twig was not designed by Beta FPV. It's made by Racer X FPV, and you've probably seen this one on my channel. This is the original Twig 3 inch. The XL has a thicker frame, it's a little bit larger as well. It's basically designed as a beefier, heavier setup. You're going to put bigger motors, and you're going to put probably a 4S battery on here and make it really a ripper, and that's why it's so durable. So, Beta FPV is selling a Bind and Fly, which is cool because until now, you've always had to build these kits yourself. Uh, Beta FPVs will look a little bit different. This is the official uh, Twig XL canopy, uh, but they're going to have their black canopy on here. So it'll be able to support the Vista and probably other split type cameras as well as an option. If you want one of these canopies, you can get these from Phoenix 3D, and I'll put a link down below as well. Unfortunately, their kit does not come with the battery holder that goes in this keyhole. Um, I don't personally use those because I find a strap more versatile for different size batteries, but I know some people do, and uh, you can get those printed from Phoenix as well. The motor is the new Beta FPV 1404 uh, 3800 kV, and these motors are super nice. They're actually manufactured by RC and Power, and these new blue motors, this and the 1505, which I'll show in a second, they're probably the nicest feeling motors that Beta FPV has ever sold. So I think this can be a pretty nice option if you've been looking at getting one of these, but you don't want to build it yourself. And yes, there is a 4-inch toothpick style drone they're selling now too. Uh, they call this the X Knight. This frame is a Beta FPV design, and it goes with the new 1505 3600 kV motors, same construction as those other motors. This is going to be a pretty interesting build. Uh, the weird thing about these motors is they have T-mount, and this is probably the biggest motor I've seen that has the T-mount. Um, and that's fine, it saves the weight, but for durability, this one millimeter shaft uh, is not very much, and so all the strength is gonna have to come from these screws. So I don't know how far you can scale up the T-mount. Um, it might be okay as long as the build is light, and that's certainly the intention with this. It's gonna have the 20 amp all-in-one flight controller and then a canopy sitting on there. Again, Beta FBV has their black canopy, but I'm gonna be using one of these, and this could also hold an HD camera or the Vista. So let me give you a closer look at this frame because I don't think the product page lets you see a lot of detail. 
Um, you've got these arms. They are four millimeters thick and about five millimeters wide. They feed into these top and bottom plates, which are a lot thinner. And the top plate has metal press fit nuts in here with M2 screws going through. And those screws are in this side, flush mount uh, so they don't stick into your battery. And then straps here, you can mount your battery however you want. This is a true X in every sense. It's completely symmetrical. I like the way the arms butt up against each other in the center. That makes for a pretty rigid connection. My only real concern with this frame is going to be durability. I think the arms are actually going to be the strong part as long as this build is light enough. I'm a little bit concerned about the center here. The top and bottom plates are pretty thin. And since these are recessed screws, the actual screw is holding on to even less material on this side. And these are recessed press fit nuts. So there's actually pretty little material in here. I'm a little bit concerned about these ripping out, but we'll find out when we put it in action. Again, hopefully the key to durability on any kind of build like this is going to be keeping the weight down. Here are three flight controllers that are relatively new. This one is the 2S Lite running a branch of NFE Silverware. Here is the 1S version. It's a little bit skinnier, not quite the same shape as the F4, but a similar kind of beveling on the side there. And this is an update to the Betaflight F4 flight controller. It's got the BT 2.0 connector on there now and BB21 ESCs. That refers to the type of chip that's used to control the ESCs. The first version of this board had BB1 ESCs. I don't know why, it must have been a few cents cheaper or something. Uh, but then they updated it and there was an awkward period where you might receive the new one and you might receive the old one. I've asked them about it and I've been told that they're all the new ones now so they should have BB21. That will affect the firmware that you can run on them and a lot of people have been complaining about BB1 because they've wanted to run uh, JESC or Jazz Maverick for the 48 kilohertz. And if you haven't heard of that, that's actually a really big deal. Um, everyone I know who's done side-by-side -side testing has gotten like 30 to 50% uh, improvement in battery life. Joshua Bardwell did a video showing exactly how you set it up, uh, but at the time you couldn't do it on the older ESCs and now you can do it on either one. And finally, they have a new Whoop camera. They call it the C01 Pro, and it comes with this canopy, which is also new. It looks like their regular canopies, but this one's actually molded plastic. The camera goes in this mount, and that mount screws up inside of here. Uh, that works out pretty nicely, and it's definitely more durable. Unfortunately, there is only one camera angle that you can use, and there's no way to adjust it. The camera itself is pretty nice. It has a larger sensor in it, same sensor as the Runcam Nano 2 or Runcam Nano 3. And so that's going to be a huge upgrade in image quality compared to most of the Whoop cameras out there. It's going to be about the same image quality as the Runcam Nano 3, and unfortunately it is almost a gram heavier because it has this more traditional Whoop lens on the front of it. If this has any advantage, it'll be in lower light where this lens allows more light in than the uh, Runcam Nano. Happy Model is sending me a Mobula 6. That'll be here soon, and so the cameras are definitely one of the things I'm going to want to compare. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. I don't usually do videos in this format showing stuff that I haven't even flown myself, uh, but but I wanted to do it this time just to get the information out there in a timely manner. Uh, and then hopefully I'll be able to follow up with more information later. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is this kind of a preview video helpful to you? And what in particular would you like to see more of in the future? Again, I can't make any promises, uh, but I will see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Happy building, everyone.